Let us pray, please. Our Father, we do thank you for this opportunity to be witnesses for this couple in their marriage. We thank you, Lord, that you have brought them together. You have given them the opportunity for this time of joining their lives together in you. Father, be with us as we witness that we can be encouragers, that we can be supporters, but most that we can celebrate in this private but yet very special moment in their lives. Now, Father, lead us, guide us, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Influences of both Scott and Susan. It was not too long ago that these precious people became part of their lives at one time. Their souls are now made perfect in the precious love and the precious peace of Jesus Christ. Because of their interactions and because of God's amazing work, he has brought them together for a time such as this. And now we celebrate what the Lord is doing as you continue this incredible ministry of love, both now and in all the days to follow. Richard, I ask you in the presence of God and these witnesses, do you commit your life to Glenda? Do you promise to love, cherish, honor, protect, and be gracious unto her through all the changing scenes of life and forsaking all others? Do you promise to be faithful only to her as long as you both shall live? Please answer by saying, I do. I do. Glenda, I ask you, in the presence of God and these witnesses, do you commit your life to Richard? Do you promise to love, cherish, honor, protect, and be gracious to him through all the changing scenes of life and forsaking all others? Do you promise to be faithful only to him as long as you both shall live? How do you respond today? I do. I do. Now, in the strength and nobility of your love, Richard and Susan, or Richard and Glenda, <laughs> then we come to that tender moment in the wedding ceremony where the bride is now honored as also being representative of the church. Remember, Jesus is the groom and his church is the bride. Let that beautiful symbol be something that goes ahead of you, beside you, behind you, and above you for the time that you spend on this beautiful earth. And so now, with that in mind, we want all of you to know that there were special scriptures selected today that mean a lot to the couple and are also so indicative of what it means when two are joined as one flesh. Reading from the Old Testament in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 through 12, listen to these words. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. If they fall... One will lift up the other, but woe to one who is alone and falls and does not have another to help. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm, but how can one keep warm alone? And though one might prevail against another, two will withstand one. A threefold cord is not easily broken. And now from the New Testament, Paul's letter to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Paul says, if I speak in the tongues of humans and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable. It keeps no record of wrongs. Don't forget that one. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease as for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, Paul says, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child, and I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see only a reflection. 
as in a mirror, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, and then I will know fully, even as I am fully known. And now faith, hope, and love remain, and the greatest of these is love. With that word from Paul, may you now sit as you hear a word from the Lord through Pastor Phil. Just as I believe that God brought you together in his magnificent plan from creation. And in Genesis, we are told that God had a plan, even in creation, that man should not be alone. God created Eve, taking from Adam a rib, and by taking the rib, he fashioned and created woman. We notice from the story that the rib was from the side, not the foot that man should trample over, nor from the head that she should rule over him, but rather from his side that he could protect her, that he could love her near his heart. It was also from his side that they would walk hand in hand in all of life, and that would give them the assurance that they were together, unified, apart. Paul, though, said it may be even better, as Pastor Will just read, love endures all things. Your love will be tested, yes. Your love will be challenged at times. And love is a beautiful thing. We don't know all the roads that your lives will take. And as you know, there are potholes and there are rough spots and there are traffic jams and everything. And the same is true in life. But God will be with you. God will be guiding you. God will protect you. And even in those rough spots, God will never leave you. Paul said that we were to recognize that love is patient. There are times when we might want our own way, but part of love is compromise. <coughs> Love is understanding. Love is forgiving. One of the most beautiful words can be, I'm sorry, because that also is love. Paul goes on and finishes by saying, three things remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. If your love is strong, it will endure anything. Hold to one another. Your marriage is very special. Your marriage is a contract, but it's more than that. It's two hearts now beating as one. Let's pray together. Father, help us to recognize that you are the source that brought these two together, that brings us all together as one family, and we can celebrate you, your life, we can celebrate your love, we can acknowledge your love in this place, that truly we will feel your presence in Jesus' name. Amen. And now may both of you join us here once again.
My friends, Richard and Glenda, you know that you're making the most significant commitment that two people could ever make. It requires the appreciation of each other's abilities, affirmation of each other's virtues, forgiveness, as Pastor Phil said, often of each other's faults, devotion to each other's welfare, and participation in each other's development. I want you to love one another as God loves you. That's a tall task. So it requires calling on Jesus to love in and through you, especially in the moments when you do not feel like doing so. Do so anyway. There's nothing you can do, though, to make God love you more. And nothing you will ever do to make Him love you any less. So love one another just like that. If Jesus says, Inasmuch as you did it to the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you did it to me, how much more is what we do for the person we are married to something that we do as unto Christ. I believe that loving our spouse is one of the most Christ-like relationships we can ever experience. And now, Richard and Glenda, I want you to turn to one another and hold hands. As a sign of your love for each other and as a token for the reverence for the vows that you're about to take. Richard, you will share your vows first. Repeat them after me. I, Richard, take you, Glenda. I, Richard, take you, Glenda. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. From this day forward. From this day forward. In plenty and in want. In plenty and in want. In joy and in sorrow. In joy and in sorrow. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. By the strength and grace of Almighty God. By the strength and grace of Almighty God. Now, Glenda, I invite you to share your vows and repeat after me. I, Glenda, take you, Richard. I, Glenda, take you, Richard. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. From this day forward. From this day forward. In plenty and in want. In plenty and in want. In joy and in sorrow. In joy and in sorrow. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. By the strength and grace of Almighty God. By the strength and grace of Almighty God. You may turn back to us. Rings are an important part of the wedding. They're an outward symbol of an inward binding of the heart. They are gold, and the gold is been tested and proven true. The rings are a never-ending circle, showing the eternal clarity of love having no beginning or no end, but goes on forever. These rings have been tested. They have been proven pure gold, just as your love is pure gold. As you take your rings, as you receive your rings, as you wear your rings, let it be an outward symbol of the union that has taken place in your hearts. Richard, the joy is you have to marry her first before she can marry <laughs> you. Would you please take Glenda's ring and give it to her, placing it on her finger and holding it there and repeat please after me. With this ring, with this ring, I be with, I be with, and with all my worldly goods, and with all my worldly goods, I be in thou, I do in thou, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Father, the Son, Son, and the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost. Linda, would you please take this <coughs> ring, which is big enough for a track? <laughs> And would you put it on Richard's finger and while holding it there, would you repeat after me, please? With this ring, 
with this ring, I be wed. And with all my worldly goods, and with all my worldly goods, I be endowed. I be endowed. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. The Son. And the Son. And the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost. Would you again bow with me as we pray? Father, we thank you for this time of symbol, this time of remembrance, this moment of recognition of the marriage of these two wonderful people. We ask, Lord, you to bless them, for you to give them strength, for you to give them guidance, Give them direction in their lives that always they know that you are with them and you are guiding them. Help them to be aware of your presence, of your presence every day. Now, Father, guide them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Richard and Glenda with deep reverence for both of you and by my humble privilege and in fields as well both of us as ministers of the gospel of jesus christ phil and i now pronounce in the name of jesus christ that you are now both husband and wife to the glory of god the father richard lay one arm <laughs> And now, if you would turn and grab with her right, with your right hand, her left hand, and face the people that love you. There's your king. Friends, family, those gathered here today, it is my joy and fills in the presence of Jesus Christ, our precious groom, to present to all of you for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Richard Austin.
<laughs> now, why is he turning it? So he and I are going back and forth on the So go ahead and fold it up drastically where it's easy for him to find it. And then I've got you highlighted. So did you want to practice any of that? Can you read it at all? And, and they'll have their rings and they're going to give you the rings. Yeah. It's a bit tough. <laughs>